Hi, in this video, we're looking at the difference between blood, plasma, and serum. And I think you're going to find the differences quite surprising. So let's get into it. Blood is composed of several different types of cells and compounds such as salts and proteins. The human body possesses over 96,560 kilometers of veins, arteries, and capillaries. Approximately 5 liters of blood travels continuously through the body by way of the circulation system. The point of all this movement of blood is to carry oxygen and nutrients to cells and transport carbon dioxide and waste products excreted from cells. It is estimated that no cell is more than four cell units removed from the circulation system. No other biofluid has intimacy with the body like blood has. And so it's not surprising that it possesses such a richness of information concerning the overall pathophysiology or unwellness of the patient or wellness of the patient. Because of this intimacy of blood with cells, blood is considered a very useful diagnostic tool. For example, the physician or the doctor may request a white blood cell count if an infection is suspected, or they may request a basic metabolite profile, and that is measuring sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium, bicarbonate, blood, urea, nitrogen, creatinine, and glucose levels if they want to determine the present state of renal function. Depending on the required test, blood can be separated into different components. So a simple blood smear can be prepared on a microscope to examine the, the cells in this blood. So you can do the red and white blood cells as well as the platelets. The liquid portion of the blood is referred to as plasma. How is plasma prepared? To prepare plasma, blood is drawn from the patient by the veins called vena puncture in the presence of an anticoagulant and the sample is then centrifuged to remove cellular or the cells in the, in the blood. So an anticoagulant means that the blood does not clot and the most common anticoagulants include heparin, ethylene, EDTA or sodium citrate. Serum, on the other hand, is prepared as follows. When blood is drawn from the veins, it's permitted to clot. And so this means that the blood cells and some of the proteins are allowed to precipitate. In other words, a fibrin clot forms. The clot is then removed using centrifugation, and this leaves behind a liquid portion that is referred to as serum. The centrifugation of the sample separates the cells, so the blood cells and fibrin clot. So at the molecular level, what is the difference between serum and plasma? A recent study by Hesch et al. showed that using different blood collection tubes affects the observable proteome. Now the proteome means the entire set of proteins that is observed. And so using different blood tubes affects this. Other factors include the clotting time that's allowed, the coagulant used, and the length of time that elapses between the blood being clotted and then it being centrifuged. Question, what are you isolating serum or plasma or blood cells for? You may know that the serum or plasma can be used to detect antibody to infections, whether viral or bacterial. Plasma and other blood components can, of course, be donated as replacement for those that are losing those components. So I'd be curious to hear what you are looking at serum or plasma or even whole blood for. Okay, so that's a quick video on how to look how to tell the difference between serum and plasma. I hope it was useful and I'll catch you in the next one. God bless you. Bye.